Hey, we're gonna talk a little bit about um, some handwriting practice, different ways that you can set that up. And um, hopefully, I'm having trouble seeing, yeah, I think you can see the table that I'm working with. So when we talk about letter formation uh, for handwriting, um, what we mean is, you know, basically the path your child is gonna take um, with their hand to create those letters. And the more they do this, um, the more they get that muscle memory and the easier it becomes. So later it's not a chore. Uh, this is when we work with sandpaper letters in our classroom, we begin with lowercase. They're gonna see a lot more lowercase in their reading and writing. They will tend to wanna write uppercase because they're easier, um, especially with an A, it's that nice pointy A. And so this is really what we're working on is um, teaching lowercase. So if I was doing this um, with a child, I would be having them sit side by side. Your presentations don't have to be perfect, but I'm giving you kind of some background information. Um, and I would have that laying down flat. And we would start at the top, and in this case, or where it begins, just to the side here, it's got a nice circle on the sandpaper letter. You don't have to have sandpaper letters. As a matter of fact, please don't go and order a bunch of Montessori stuff for yourself. But um, you could make, you know, on cardboard, just something that had a big, beautiful, Sharpie A on there, okay? And so you wanna practice, we try to do everything in sets of threes. So I would trace it and say ah, ah, ah. I separate the act of tracing from actually making the sound because as soon as you start talking or making a sound, they look at your mouth rather than down at your hand. And you could do this with no language, but if the child was actively working on learning their sounds associated with the symbol, you could give them that too. Um, so there it is, that's a. Uh. Now, if what we have set up here, sorry, is um, a grits tray. Remember when, um, if you watched the video about measuring, I said, don't worry, we're not gonna totally waste food, we're gonna use it again. So um, if you used some grits, for pouring and um, leveling off rather for measuring cup practice or even some small lentils or rice would work in here um, and sand if you have it but it can tend to scratch up your tabletops and your floors and take the finish off so we would try to use something a little bit softer so I, I then could go once I've introduced this to a child and kind of showed them how to work with it um, then we would do an individual letter I would trace it here and then in the tray. And you can give them a tool for smoothing it out. It's a little tricky, um, a brush, or we use this little squeegee. Um, just the other day I walked by and a child was just doing this. And it was perfectly controlled and beautiful. Um, so this is something that you could set up to have on your shelf when maybe, you know, part of your day is for them to practice letters. Um, I've been doing them, not like in our classroom, but I've been giving them to you in the Daily Digest in alphabetical order. That's not how we introduce them. We introduce, we introduce them in small groups, and sometimes you'll see on your child's um, Friday note that they might be working with the red sandpaper letters or the orange sandpaper letters. And I may go, I may pivot and go back to that, but for right now, it doesn't hurt for us to learn them in alphabetical order and make sure we talk about each and every one. Okay, so I'm gonna show you some alternatives though. I'm gonna move that grits tray and bring down some other things. We're gonna keep with that ah sound. All right, so if you have a small chalkboard, great. If you have large chalkboard like we do on our wall, even better, because the more you can involve gross motor in this letter formation, even better, because your younger children are really gonna learn, need to learn to um, track and to cross the midline. Um, but, <clears throat> you know, it gets finer and finer as, as we grow. So you can, this part, they could write their own, or you could write a beautiful ah uh, on here. And they can just practice writing it in chalk, but here's the fun, Alternative, okay? You're still working on that pincer grip when you hold this paintbrush, but instead of writing the A, this gives them a guideline um, for those that wanna do it perfectly. They're gonna erase the A with water. Oh, 
and down. Give yourself a nice pause in between. Teach them to stop and admire their work and to slow down. You can, I'm not sure how that's showing up on the camera, so I'll hold that up for you. And you'd be surprised how satisfying this is and how much they will stay with it. On a larger chalkboard, and we have different sizes, I might give them 10 of these to erase. And it's really fun. You could give a small sponge or a small towel with this work because your expectation is that they're gonna clean it up. We're not giving you these ideas so that you're gonna entertain your child all day and then have a big mess and a ton of prep. There is preparation involved, but um, let's set the expectation from the start that when they're finished, they're gonna empty the water. This is where the paintbrush goes. This is where our towel goes and they can leave you know, the chalkboard there, whatever it is, think that through. Um, that's great. Okay, so let's say, and this is a great one to do outside um, too, and you could do this with sidewalk chalk and they could do it in a very large format. Um, they could, you know, use a larger paintbrush, like something that you would paint the house with um, if they really get jazzed about big stuff. Now, if you have a high tolerance for mess, this is super satisfying, whether it's in the bathtub or just right here on a table. Um, and you've seen me kind of talk about it, um, writing in shaving cream. And we do this once in a while in the afternoon. Um, so you really don't need a lot. Oh, this is fun. I'm already digging this. <laughs> so again, this is something, and it's whole hand. You want to really, really just this part, give yourself some time for this. And when we do this with, um, sometimes we do this with the elders in the, in August or, you know, later in the year too, but in those hot initial days of kindergarten where it seems like they're so exhausted, we want to really engage the senses in that afternoon as they, um, grow their stamina. Okay. So you're going to cover it and their instinct is going to be to want to play with it a whole bunch. And you could say, we are going to do that after I'll give you some fresh, but what I want to do right now is to practice writing in this. So, you know, you could go back to that shape they're going to trace with the A and trace it right here. Okay, if I just am working with somebody that this is brand new to, I'm going to expect a larger A and maybe just a single A. They could keep following that path. If this is a child that is perfecting their handwriting and they've been doing it for a while, I'm going to squirt some more on here. Aren't those birds delightful? I usually move them out when I'm, when I'm doing professional videos, but um, they've, been, they've been lonely enough, so I have not wheeled them into the hallway. Okay, I'm going to clean my hand off a little bit to show you that if it was, um, you know, a five-year-old who'd been practicing this for a while, I'm going to say to them, okay, you guys, um, I want you to show me 10 A's. So they're making it a little bit smaller and they're getting that repetition. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. Uh, 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 uh. Obviously, if they're a left-handed person, you're going to have them right left-handed. And so they're going to get a trifle. And then they can make it disappear. 